Well, we are talking about measuring a shed antler today. I got a special guest. I got Mr. Dave Bolin, who a long time ago taught me how to measure a shed, I believe. How many years ago was it? 32 years ago when the shed club started. Actually, 1991, we taught our first class. And Pat was one of our first um, people to take our class. Dave was the instructor back then. And Dave's measured a lot of sheds over the course of his lifetime. How many sheds have you measured? You figure sheds? I keep track. People have asked me this for years, so I keep track what I measure, uh, whether it's a rack or sheds, and I keep it by species for or weapons in the gun in the weapons place. But yeah. for sheds, I've I just I, at the end of the year I always tally up how many I measure in one year and then how many I measure for total. And last year I measured more than I've ever measured in my life. I measured over five over six hundred almost six hundred forty sheds last year. That's the most I ever measured in one year, and. Uh, Total, I measured 8,808 as of December 31st. <laughs> my pleasure. I'm my, my super pleasure. I guess I'm getting so I like to measure sheds more than I do racks, actually. That's right. Well, you know, in the old days, people didn't measure sheds. There was no, there was no record-keeping system for mm -hmm. it. Nope. But the North American Shed Hunting Club, you know, which started way back in 91. 91. Um, you know, that I was a part of back then, so I feel very honored to uh, been a longtime member of that organization. And, you know, people are now entering sheds. It's a big deal. It is a really big deal, yep. And wish we'd get more from out west because we don't have a lot of entries from out west just because they, they started in the Midwest. So. Right, right. But we have a lot more whitetails, just like any of the organizations, but, mostly whitetails. Right, but I mean, there there's uh, categories for all species, right? All species. All, all animals in shed. shed. For the shed antler. Everyone that shed. You know, whether it's moose, caribou, coos deer, um, you know, mule deer. There's mule deer, Sitka. All so kinds of different. Everyone. You know, yeah. And uh, the, the Shed Hunting Club, you know, is an awesome organization for sure. Can't say enough about them. But if you got a big shed you know, and you need to have it measured, you can get a hold of Dave or or one of the measures around the country and you know get your shed entered into the record books. But today we're just gonna go through a quick basic tutorial on how to measure a shed antler, you know, the quickest way. And Dave's just gonna give us a step-by-step -step process, starting with this big typical right side that was picked up in Kansas many years ago. And it's in my collection and I thought we'd be a good one to measure because it's just real clean. It's so nice, what's, beautiful. What's, What's the first step? I see you, you know, you got your score sheet out here, which uh, is, you know, a score sheet from the Shed Hunters Club. And, uh, you know, that way it's easily, you know, you don't have to have a score sheet to, to write down the score and figure out what a shed scores, but it's nice to have that record. Just makes it easier. I keep all my score sheets no matter what. Uh, just like the other organizations, uh, if you don't enter it, you don't get a copy of the score sheet or don't get a picture of it. Uh, gotcha. We gave you all the information that you have, but I don't throw the score sheets away. So if you come back years later, I'll have it. Well, let's go ahead and measure this shut up. What's our What's our first step? What are you going to measure first on this antler? Well, I draw my lines first, like I do on everything. Draw my lines first. And it's, why are you drawing a line? Um, what it must do is. What would this a shed look like if it was a spike? So what I do is draw a line and then I center line it so that I make sure I go down the center of the point. I don't go on the short side or the long side. You always measure down the dead center of a point, no matter what. And you're just making those lines, so that's your line you're going to measure from. Yep, I measure, or two. I measure to it. Yep. Draw the line, then I make my center line, discount webbing, and there's your center. So there's where you measure to, right there, dead center. Gotcha. Like you said, you do this for, you know, a, a completed rack too. Yes, it's no different, whether it's a rack or a shed. Um, and you're measuring from lowest point on the beam, on the top of the beam to the lowest, or uh, to the, the lowest point on the top of the beam yep. on the other side. Yep. I use a tape. A lot of people use the cable. In fact, most people use the cable. Um, not too many people use the tape. But then... Uh, it does give you a straight line, though. Yeah, the cable, you can push it more than I can with the, the tape measure. So you just find out what works for you. 
and you get the measure over always the outside the curve and this brow tine I cannot tell which is the longest so I will mark it on both sides. Gotcha. And it's important to to note that you can measure any tine on the front or the back side, whichever the longest. Whichever is the longest. I always get to go over the outside curve on a typical point. On a non-typical point, if it's round, you just find the out longest and go over it. But if it's if it's got two flat sides, you then have to start on the side, just like you do on a on typical points. So a lot of the, your burr points are perfectly round or down down around the burr between the brow and the burr are, are round, so you can go all the way around. You can get the longest over the longest curve then. All right. To find on a shed and a rack, it's a lot easier because you just look through one burr, so you can't see the other burr, and then you find center. On the shed, it's a little bit harder because you don't have the other side to look at. But there again, I was telling earlier that basically what it amounts to is it seems like it's a, on the outside edge here. It seems like that the lowest point on the outside edge quite often is where you actually want to start. I don't know. It's just kind of like water. Always find your lowest thing. Yep. Well, that seems what it seems to do on, on your burr points when you're going to measure a, a shed even. That's where the water would drip off. Where the water would drip off, the lowest point on the outside edge. And you always go right down the center, no matter what. So you're going to take your cable and start at that lowest point and then follow that outside edge outside. all the way around the beam. Yeah. Make sure you stay in the center. Now if I want to make this, say I don't like the guy, I can... <laughs> like, might, might, you're, you're really going to mess me up on the <laughs> score here? You can run the bottom of the beam because then you're going to shorten it. But if you run the top of the beam, you're going to make it longer, so make sure you stay in the center of the beam, no matter what. No, Dave, we're going to take the longer side because you like me. <laughs> I do. Well, you're not as pretty, though, so to call those. I'll give her a bigger score. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is her shed. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we make sure we stay in the center. I'll show you what happens. Also, when you've got a shed laying like this or a rack, what looks like the center may not be the center. Here, it looks like this could be the center. Yeah. So now when I roll it up, if you look, I'm on the bottom of the beam. Okay. So you got to remember in relationship to where where things are. Yeah, and it's really important because you're going to lose definitely. You could lose up to an inch. Up you know, to an inch. Yep. Especially with, the, with these really wider ones, or you could gain an inch if you go on the high side. So. Yeah, or if you're Nicole, you gain an inch. <laughs> so you just, that's why another reason why you draw your lines on your points, because that there helps you define where your center of your beam is. So oh, you just, yeah. Good point. so it helps you go right down the center. Oh, if you would, Pat, it would be nice if you gotcha. write for me, because yep. it's one of the reasons why I have so many, measured so many. I have friends of me that have, one friend has wrote for me for almost 30 years. So you can measure, oh my gosh, um, you picked a good shed. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> That's good a good beam. shed when you get out there. You're uh, almost on a cable. Yeah, it's getting there. So it speeds up the process of measuring if you have somebody that knows how, knows what you're doing and write for you. Because otherwise, I have to lay this stuff down now after I take the score and write it and pick my equipment up and start over again. Yeah. So it more than doubles how what you can do. It should be 29 inches. Oh, yeah. That's a good beam, isn't it? 29.5. That's almost as long as your, your big deer measured for you. Oh, that's well, look right. at that. Have you ever measured a shed for you? I don't believe you have. If it is, it's been 20 years ago or 30 years ago. 29 and 5. 29 and 5. That is awesome. And you're measuring in eights. In eights. Everything goes in eights. If you land on the 16th, you get to go up. Don't even question it. If you land on that 16th mark, you get to go up, always. And since I don't know which is longest on this brow time, I will measure it from both sides. What I do, some, what I try to do is guess which I think is the longest and see if I'm right. It surprises you sometimes. Right. It just, it, it can't sure. be longer from that side because it's got the bend. But here again, there it is. It's, uh, oh yeah, it is. It's about 3 sixteenths long on the inside. But if you look at the point, it doesn't. Looks like here it's got the curve here. 
Yeah, you'd think that that would be well, the You'd think it would be the longest, but that's why you measure both sides, especially on your brows, if you don't know. That's where it happens more times than off than any place else is the brow tines are longer from the inside than they are from the outside, although they don't appear that way. Eight and four eighths. Now, remind people of what you call these points. Oh, the reason why we call it what they are is just because of the way the score sheets are set up. The shed sheets are set up a little bit different, but normally the first one you come to is called G1, G2, G3, G4, and right on off the line if you have more. And the circumferences are H's, H1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's why it's just easier to designate something than so you know what you're talking about. If you've got somebody that writes for you, it'll make a difference, but it so just makes life the, easier. We're measuring the G2 now. Yes. It's a good shed. I would think it's going to be in the mid-70s. Well, maybe with that, that beam, it might be, yeah, it should be mid-70s. Ten and four-eighths. Yeah, the normal beam on an adult white tail, four and a half years or older, is 23 to 26. Okay. So if you get the 27 inch beams on, it's just like having an extra point on there on your beam sure. rather than a helps us in helps the score. with your score. That's where the, your big deer are doing. There again, see, do we land on the 16th? So we get to go up. It's 11 and 5 eighths. It is three and seven eighths, or G4. Your circumferences are between your typical points, not between your non-typicals. The first one is between the burr and the brow, if you have it, which is on a white tail. Super rare that you don't have a white tail, or that you don't have a G1. Ooh, better than average, Pat. Five and two eighths. I like that. Your second measurement between your brow and your G2. Five and that was five and two, you say? Yep. On your sixteenth, so it is four and six eighths. Third circumference between two and three, five and one eighth. Your fourth circumference. On the 16th, so we get to go up four and three eighths. So you're taking four circumference measurements. Four circumference always. If you have a spike, you get four circumferences. It don't make no difference. Every shed or rack gets four circumferences no matter what. You just got to remember where you take them. I appreciate you getting rid of those lines for me. He didn't come with them. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I have the. That's you know that's that's the. Uh, that's funny because I'm sure you've measured racks before, historical ones, and people like, never been measured, and then you pull it up, and you look at it, and you're like, where did these lines come where from? Where did the lines come from? Yeah, I, I just measured some, we measured some this past weekend down in Iowa, and I had a few of them that had marks on them. Nope, not that I never measured it. Yeah. Somebody, they said somebody else did. So. Okay, so is that it for the measurements? Now yep. it's time to tally. Now it's time to tally. All right. I'll let you do that because you're a little better than I am at it. You've done a few. I have done a few. Almost 9,000 to be exact. <laughs> I always do in my head um, because what goes in your, your calculator comes out. So if you put the wrong one in by accident, um, it's not right. Right. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, it's, I guess it's in the mid-70s, all right. This one might even shock Dave. It did. 83 and 5, Pat. That's because of that the long beam. Sure made a difference. Wow. I said high, I said on mid 70s, but it has a, almost a 30 inch beam, so you add 5 inches on that, so you take off the 78. And I said mid 70s, and that's what it would have been without that long, long beam on there. And the big brown. 83 brow is unusual. and 5. five. 
Yeah, the brow is bigger than normal, that's too. A, that's a big shed. That's a big shed. Really big shed, because basically what it amounts to, without an inside spread, it's 166, 167 inches with no spread. Right, you give this thing a 20 inch inside. You're a 180 inch deer, that's unreal. 180, well, 180 plus deer. And it really don't even have all. Doesn't one. have much of a four. No, so you can get a lot of score off of that. Yeah. yeah. This basically what it amounts to is you got add this up here because this is normally three to five inches. And the long beam. So when you're walking through the woods and you pick up an 83 inch, I've you... never picked up an 83 inch typical pack. <laughs> there are not many out there. <laughs> I picked up a three non typical 80 inchers, but never a typical 80 incher. If I want to enter this in the shed hunting club's book, uh, how would I go about doing that? There's a website on all your organizations, and the Shed Club has got one too. You just find, uh, go to your state, and it'll list some people in your particular state, and then you find the one that, that's closest to you, or somebody you might even know somebody. And yeah, so the Shed Hunters Club is shedantlers.org, right? That's what it says on your shirt right here. Is that what it says? I don't know what it is. I never <laughs> look it up. I didn't know that either. But you could just Google North American Shed Hunting Club. It would also take you to their the website, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. This When I got the shirt made, it was by a different group owned it at that time. So maybe yeah. it, that is, maybe has changed. But it's now. the North American Shed Hunting Club. Yeah. And uh, that's where you can enter your sheds, no matter if it's a moose shed or an elk shed or, you know, whatever species it is, as long as it's shed antler you can have it measured and entered in the book. So uh, I'll yeah. have to think about this one. This is a pretty nice shed. Yeah, we don't take cutoffs. Don't take cutoffs. Well, yeah. Some um, people cut This off. is naturally That's shed. That's beautiful natural shed, yes. But thanks for going through how to score a shed antler. Of course, you know, there's a lot of differences in non-typicals and stuff like that, but that's just a basic way to score your shed antler is just the way you did it today. So appreciate you showing us. My pleasure, Pat. And you just add this one to your grand total. <laughs>